Hey guys, today I am talking about the portable airbrush compressor, no name, and the kit actually that I bought, which came with the paints, the airbrush, you know, the hose, a USB charging port, some cleaning supplies, stuff like that. The thing that's a little bit different than the one I had a couple of years ago is they're a little bit more powerful than that one. And the one I had a couple of years ago was proprietary. In other words, it, it only fit on the airbrush that you have. So these come with the way the adapter works. You can hook that up directly to the airbrush that comes with it, or you can hook it up with a hose. And this is a standard quarter inch fitting. So it fits on most every airbrush out there. Of course, any that's adapted for the standard airbrush hose it comes with that little adapter in there so that you can attach it here and run the hose over to your airbrush, which makes it really handy so that you can grab it, hook your hose up. You can drop this in your pocket, back pocket, whatever, and not have all of this in your hand, which is a lot of weight on your hand, which is one of the complaints with these when they first came out. So this one has a button, you turn it on. Like I said, we can drop it in our pocket here. You guys get to see me in my men's lingerie today. So we'll go through and I'll spray a little bit with it to see what you can kind of expect. It is important to understand you're gonna to have to thin the paint down just a little bit with these. And these are, you know, and then after I get done spraying, we'll do a little test sample. We'll talk about runtime and we'll talk about where this might be useful afterwards. Okay, since this is the no-name cordless airbrush and it came with no-name paints, I'm going to just put the no-name paint in straight out of the bottle and see how it does. We may need to add some reducer to that and just kind of go through. You see it's a little bit speckly there, so we are going to add just a little bit of reducer to the paint. That's no surprise. Um, with a small tip airbrush, I'm surprised. Low pressure, spraying out. There we go. Out of curiosity, I am going to go ahead and see, test that Mac valve and the Mac valve shuts completely off. So nothing's coming out when the Mac valve is off. And yeah, can adjust the flow from that Mac valve. Although in this case, we're gonna keep it opened up because we already don't have a lot of pressure coming out of this compressor. And uh, just wanted to see if we could just keep that running for a bit and if it would keep up. Actually, I have run this. For a little bit already. So if you want to do a little stenciling work. So 
So I hooked it up to my Wada Eclipse. I wanted to see if it could actually run the Eclipse. I thinned the paint down a bit and because the Eclipse is a little bit of an air hog compared to detail brushes. And I know if it's going to run this airbrush, it will definitely run any of my detail airbrushes without any issue. And that way if somebody was trying to do priming, albeit they'd have to thin the primer out a little bit on like minis or something like that, you could use a slightly larger tip airbrush than what it came with and I'm just not got any destination of course I'm not painting any art with this I'm just holding it down to see if it'll keep running you know how, how long it'll run it As a side note, removing the hose will give you just a little bit more pressure than if you've got the hose on it. Um, it's not a huge difference, but it is a little bit of a difference. Oh, out of paint. So let's talk about some scenarios in which you might use this. Um, could this be your only airbrush? Um, not if you're like seriously trying to do art, you know, that, that would be just too much. I don't think that these would hold up, you know, despite the fact that I think they're fairly durable, I don't think they're going to hold up to a whole lot of drops. And secondly, I don't think if you were trying to run this an hour every single day, I can't see that lasting several years like that. However... I think they're great scenarios for it. One, I'm about to use this. I'm going to be going to a kid's birthday party here right at Halloween. So what I'm going to do is go get me some body art paint. I'm going to be in a scenario where I'm not like tied up with anything. And that way I can do temporary tattoos, things like that. It, it creates another dimension to things that I can offer. And I'm going to use this for family purposes as well. So yeah, in that scenario, I think it's great. I think as an only airbrush, you could probably use this as your only airbrush if you were doing like cake bakers. If you're a small scale cake, cake baker who wants to do because you're already working with really thin paints. Um, or well, they're not paints, you know, food coloring. Food coloring is very thin and you could easily do blending and shading on a cake with this. This would be all you would need. You, you'd be done. You'd just get one of these and you'd be able to put all your blends and shading that you need to to color your cakes. I also think that you could get quite a bit of your shading and stuff like that if you were a Warhammer you know, guy, if you're doing like Warhammer miniatures and stuff like that, you could do a lot of your, you know, little highlights and things like that with something like that where you're not doing, you know, a really long time airbrushing at a time. My run time on this, I was able to run this for over 30 minutes straight. Like, and I'm not talking about light airbrushing. I'm talking about having my finger on the trigger, running and running and running and running, you know, doing lots of paint for 30 straight minutes. At about that point, I had reached about 50% level of charge after about 30 minutes. When it got down to about 50% charge, I started noticing that the pressure was, you know, getting a little bit less. So if your paints, you know, I started getting more speckly because the paint wasn't atomizing as finely um, once the battery got down. But 
that was quite a bit of runtime. It was surprising to me how far I was able to get with it. So I'm going to take a little look at the airbrush real quick and talk about the airbrush real quick and then I'll give you my finals. Okay, so I got it disassembled. One of the things, the bowl's pretty polished, all great like that. I'm hoping I can get to see in it. Hopefully you guys can catch it. That is a Teflon packing off of the trigger, which is the first one I've seen a commercial airbrush, and that's Teflon packing up in the very front end of this airbrush. At first glance, this looks like people are gonna think this is just a Micron knockoff. It is not. This is the head assembly for this, which is very similar to like the old Badger 100s. So it screws in, and of course you got your normal nozzle up there. But the cool thing about this is you won't have to take apart that nozzle. You'll be able to just pull that head assembly out like I've mentioned a million times, run a striping brush through here to clean this out. So you should really should never have to take that nozzle itself out unless you have damage. And of course the Mac valve, as I mentioned before, works entirely. And you know, typical air assembly. The other thing is it's got a flat cut on the back end of the trigger instead of being rounded off like most of the ones I see from China, which makes it more stable. It has really good trigger response on this airbrush. And I'm going to see if I can find out what model this is and maybe do a more thorough just this airbrush review. I've run it with uh, regular air, you know, from my big setup. And, you know, this may be a pretty decent sleeper, um, economical, you know, detail airbrush as well. Anyway. All right, guys. So these have been on the market for a while now, you know, and it's been very controversial. People love them or people think they're total junk. I am of the camp of, I think they're useful. I don't think I would clearly, you can see my setup behind me. Clearly I'm not going to use this as a full-time airbrush, but I am going to use it in circumstances and i'm going to be taking it around right around halloween i'm going to take this and do a whole bunch of face painting makeup with this so when we do that i'll report back to you guys tell you you know how it worked out for me i might see if i can pick up just another you know one of the base units so that i only take one airbrush with me the only difficulty i would have doing uh face painting with this is the fact that i only have one airbrush so quick color changes won't be you know, really an option. I would need to, um, you know, it need to be a slow environment. I wouldn't want to have just one airbrush color availability Do if I was doing it in a fair environment or something like that where I was trying to make money with it. But uh, for, you know, a, like a family style event, I, I'll be fine with that. Anyway, tell me what you guys think. Tell me if you guys have any of these. If you've been messing with any of these cordless airbrushes, let me know what you think down in the comments below. That's going to be a wrap for today. I'm Bill Kennedy with the Airspace. I appreciate y'all. Oh, and I will, of course, drop you guys a link for where you can purchase the one that I did. I will leave you a link to their, like, the whole list of what they have in these cordless airbrushes. And I'm going to leave you a link for Amazon. And I'll also leave you a link over to Spray Gunner. Spray Gunner is the no-name supplier. But I will tell you a little thing is Spray Gun is really trying to break into doing a lot more sales on Amazon. So they would highly, highly, highly appreciate if you buy through Amazon. And once you get product that you buy through Amazon from the no-name brand, they would really love it if you guys would leave them some reviews there. And uh, yeah, I'm not sponsored. I pay for this without my own money. I, I, I buy stuff with my own money all the time. I budget for that. It is what I do with the money I earn from YouTube is invest back into gear so I can review for you guys. That's a wrap, guys. Sorry if I got a little long-winded. I'm Bill Kennedy. Y'all have a great day.